Splash! You've just entered the deep end. Yes, this is the deep end. A follow-up to this week's episode of Brandon's Discuss Anime, which was fully coolly progressive. Uh, no, yeah, this is a very deep end. It's about 16 feet, according to the D20. That's going to carry over? I mean, it's it's going to be a staple from now on. I'm going to try my hardest to make that the case. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> we all need a little RNG in our life. With the natural eight. Will this be in everything we do? Uh, I don't see how there's going to be time in, like, the gameplay videos, but... Let's... Yeah, everything else, yes. Let's try to keep this out of the movie podcast. Uh, that's a 16. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Crap! It, it got a 16 on its, uh, on its skill check. I'm pretty sure that passes. But I'm the editor. Haha, I can edit it out. Haha! By cutting out quality. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you uh, just love to torment me. I like rolling dice. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, that's a net 20 on my charisma skill check. I'm pretty sure I win. Oh. But, <laughs> but rolling dice is fun. Oh, I got a 7. Yeah, I win. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about Fully Cooly Progressive now? Uh, roll, roll, roll your dice. Give me your number. We'll see. Will, will you pass the, uh, will you pass the check or not? 18. All right, yep, that'll do it. Okay. We shall progress forward. Yes. All right, so we're just going to dive right into the nitty gritty here, I assume. Because yes. I have, as with the last time we did this, a shit ton of notes of questions and just things that are like, what's going on? But can we just mention... How confused Orion was on the main podcast. I mean, he barely remembered the original series, so... That's the thing, though. With Progressive, can't you just kind of jump into this? Like, jump into this one without seeing the original? Or is it too much? I'm not sure. There is slight bit of... Like, character recognition... But that's about it. Like, I was going to say, like, other than perhaps two parts, yes. And that's because of the cock teasing about is Ide actually Nauta or not in the beginning. And it's just going to be like, well, why is this going on? Why are we just seeing the guy's hair? What's happening? Yeah. Like, for someone just coming in, that'll be real weird and obnoxious. And the other part's going to be like, Haruko referencing and talking about Conti. And it's just like, wait, you know who he is? Why is he called Conti? What? I, I like, guess. I feel like those are the only two things that pull from the first series that you're going to be left out on. And that's how I feel Alternative will be. It will be pretty much standalone, except with possible nods to the first one. Well, actually, here was what I was wondering, because we never saw anything with Jinyu in the... Anything as far as I've seen in Alternative. Mm. So I'm curious if Jinyu's even going to be in that. Or will it be in Alternative 2 Progressive? Well, that was my other thought when I first heard the titles. Like, is it... Are we getting Alternative and it's just a complete uh, perspective change on this? Like, in the original, right? Or not the original, in um Progressive. We were more more following Jinyu than we were Haruko. Yeah. Are we going to see what Haruko was doing before Progressive started? Maybe, because it does follow a different set of characters. Yeah, right? And the interesting part is, in Japan, these are being limited release in theaters with alternatives being released first and Progressive being released second. Huh. Interesting. And I think they're being released in late September to mid-November. Like, somewhere in there. 
All right, so like coincide with ours. Uh, our release date for the most part. N- Just no, no, I meant like both of them will be released for like two weeks, and then about two weeks later, the next one will come out. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I, I don't think there's really anything else that's not on my list that I wanted to go for yet. Besides so like, the kick-ass music. Well, I mean, that's clearly the case. It's got amazing music. What do you, it's the pillows. What do you want? Yes. Like, I'm not going to lie and tell you that I love every single one, but, like, I don't hate any of them, is the thing. They're all good. It's just a matter of how good are they. And I'm kind of glad we got a extension of Last Dinosaur, which was the preview Denver, theme the from... Last Dinosaur. I'm sorry, but... The name for that song is just too easy. Too easy to make the joke. I don't think I ever saw that. <laughs> I only know of it from 80s kids that I've seen talk about it or heard talk about it. Specifically the theme song, because apparently the theme song was kind of kick-ass at the time. I will have to look at it afterwards. So, my first question, and here's here's where we're going to get into this. How much of this relates to the original, which is like... Are any of these kids related to the original cast at all? Because we never see Ide's family, and he's gotten out his haircut. Because for the longest time, people were thinking that... Oh, crap, I'm blanking on character names right now. Kodomi, that her mother was Mamimi. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have thought that at all. I wouldn't believe that for a second. People would... Thinking about that, I believe on Reddit or something, when I was just looking at episodes. If they were looking at it like, okay, episode discussions, yeah, no, I would. If they were just basing that on, like, whatever they saw from trailers, maybe I could see it. Once I've actually seen Hidomi's mother, I disagree completely. There's no way she's that bubbly, because there's... (laughs) I do not see Mamimi ever being like that. She had way too much of a troubled, like, issues to be that way. But then again, I'm just going by Reddit. Yeah, no, I I just disagree with Reddit. Or at least in that theory. Like, even knowing now what I wouldn't have known at the time, I don't think I would have agreed. Just seeing, like, the first scene with her mother. It would have been more than enough for me to be like, no, there's no way. There's too much of a drastic difference in their character and who they are. Like, personality-wise. Yeah. It's too drastic of a change. I don't think that would be the case. Especially once you see, like, the ending sequence and you literally see Mamimi in the ending. Like, she's there. And Nauta. But she's there with a motorbike with her freaking phone in her hand, like, having taken a picture or is going to take a picture of, like, the stars falling from the sky. Mm -hmm. Like, even with, like, especially because of that ending, but even just with the scene with... Uh, Hidomi's mother. There's no way that they would ever be the same. They're way too different. But yeah, like my main my main thing was like, alright is Nauta related to any of these people? Because like I said, Ide's got his hair. They make the entire like first five minutes of the first episode a joke about cock teasing the audience about oh man, it's Nauta. Oh, it's totally him. First person perspective. Oh, not gonna show you his face. Just his forehead up. No, we're not going to show... No, it's not him. So, yeah, like, we... Is he related to Ide in any way? Clearly, like, from the ending, he's, at the very least, assuming that the timeline is, like, that's where he is when Haruko gets Adamisk. Assuming that timeline is supposed to be correct and isn't, like, some mind sequence going on. Ide doesn't have a family. He's there on his own. So is Nauta related to him, potentially, because they have the similar look? Or is he related to Hidomi, who doesn't have a father? I like, don't know. Does they both have that, like, big amount of N.O. power? Is that hereditary or not? Like... Maybe? And I that's, the other, that's the other thing, too. Because he went, during, like, that first dream sequence, when Hidomi becomes, like, that robot form, she also gets the Atomisk symbol. Which is, oh, I think I said it was adult 
mixed with something else. Like child, I think. Maybe? I think it's adult and child. Uh, was the was the corrupted symbols or something like that? And bouncing back to the original, and this is more me shipping than anything. But did Nina Mori have no power? That's debatable. It seemed like we we see this happen actually in Progressive as well. It seemed like it was transferred, right? Like when Marco runs into Hidomiya at one point, it seems like their heads hit each other and it's like an exchange happens because Marco starts like getting that weird pole growing out of his head at one point. Oh yes. So I almost feel like the same thing. If I remember right, I think the same thing happened. It just wasn't as clear in the original. Okay. Okay. Cause like when he don't mean Marco have that happen, you see like the skull trigger, like this, uh, the X-ray almost feel to it at that point. Like, it's fairly clear that it's been transferred, or at least that has been transferred to Marco, some spark for it. And jumping back to the ending, which seems to be soon after the end of the original... With... I, I thought it's unclear. It's It's gotta be, I would say, within a couple of years, at least... So, did finally getting Adamisk separate Haruko into Julia and other Haruko? That's the thing. Do we want to take that as gospel, this is exactly what happened? Or is this something that's actually, like, symbolic rather than actually what happened? Like, I know I've seen some people say that Perhaps Jinyu came out of Haruko because she's like a whole N.O. like conduit at this point after absorbing Atomisk. Like it's not just her forehead, it's her entire body. And that's what we're seeing? Or is it actually like their personalities completely splitting from each other? Because Yahoo, which is Haruko mostly through the series, she is not the same Haruko. That's why I I want to say it's both a mental and physical split in this case. I'm more in line with the theory that, like, we've seen the symbol of, like, child and adult on Atomisk and that whole weird corruption of it. My thought process, right, in this is that the split is literally taking place in that form. Jinyu is the adult version of Haruko, and what was it, Raharu is what you're calling her now? Yes. She is the child side of Haruko. Like, I kind of get that, especially because of, like, Jinyu's personality being one that's, like, super adult and kind of, like, not obsessing anymore over Adamesque. Whereas we see Raharu going in and being like super obsessive, like even further, like, and even in like interactions and stuff, I don't see like the, the orange haired Haruko ever getting super mature with anything the way she did back in the original series. Mm -hmm. It doesn't ever happen. I don't feel at least until like they refuse with each other. And we get to see, like, original Haruko again. Which, again, that kind of, I think, blends back in with it, because once Haruko eats Junyu, she's kind of back to her pink-haired original self. Granted, with a fetishized, you know, pregnant stomach. Yes. And how Haruko, or Rahu, as her teacher persona, made kids watch porn to find, like, the perfect and a victim? Well, here, here's the other thing with that, right? I knew immediately upon watching that, I'm like, within about two minutes, I'm like, the teacher's Haruko. It, it's too hard not to, like, realize the voice is the case because of that voice. I This is Haruko putting on another persona. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, like, all right, who did she bound and gag this time? 
because she literally did that in the first series when she did it with like the nurse and the doctor in order oh, yeah. to steal the outfit. Oh yeah. I'm like, where's the original teacher? Who hired her? Also, her powers get more ambiguous too, because now she's got mass hypnosis as a thing. I think. Because I don't remember her showing that in the original. Granted, she hadn't fused with Adamus, as far as we know at that point, so who knows what that did as far as, like, powers and abilities. But since Adamus is the Pirate King, as he was called in the first series? Yes. Which, again, I don't really know why he's called that. That's still not a very clear title to anyone. Hmm. But yeah, I, 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 again, I'm more in line with the idea of, yes, Jinyu and Haruko were once the same person, and the whole idea of child versus adult split the two in half. It's why Jinyu is constantly like, you can't keep obsessing over it. Like, when they're fighting, you can't keep obsessing over this. It's not going to happen. Don't you realize that we can't do this? Like, they're after the same thing, but for different reasons. She wants, like, Jinya wants to keep Adamus free and able to do whatever Adamus wants to do. Haruka wants to hold him down and keep him for herself. Because she's in love with him. Well, quote unquote, in love with him. The thing is, like, is she actually in love with him or is she in love with the idea of him? I think it gained over time. I think in the beginning, meaning Fooly Cooly won. She was more obsessed over the fact that he had unlimited power. She could have that power. And once she had that power, and she knew what Adamus truly was, I think she more fell in love with Adamus as a being and not just an idea. Mm, I'm going to disagree only because I don't feel like there's enough evidence to really support that. Like, you're, you're going on a lot of speculation of what happened in between that we don't have. But just the fact that him becoming human form and her crying, saying, like, I need you. Like, why don't you need me? Well, here's the thing, too, right? During that moment when he takes that human form at the end of the, you know, the last episode, he's possessing Jinyu. Like, Adamus can't take human form without someone to possess. Oh, like, there's a reason why he's never had a human form. He's He did it when he possessed Nauta. He kind of did it when he was possessing Conti, though that was, a gay, I guess, a robot version of a human at that point. So that was Jinyu he was possessing? Oh. He was, yeah, why do you think Jinyu was still holding Haruko at the end? Like, after that whole thing. Oh. Adamus was possessing Jinyu. Oh. Haruko tried to absorb him, didn't work out, and he separated, and uh, he was possessing Jinyu after having like taken her back out of Haruko or something like that, explaining why she's there holding her once Adamus goes back to bird form. Huh. I must have misinterpreted that. I thought it, I thought it was fairly clear because the way like you saw Adamus like leaving the body, and then the next shot you get is just Jinyu holding Haruko. No, I I, I just meant like the I. I guess we're on two different wavelengths, but I, I don't even know where I'm getting at anymore. But yeah, no, he, he's never had a human form without a host. Okay. Like, he's otherwise, he's always the big bird. And why is he a bird? I assume that's his natural form? Because Fooly Cooly 1 had so many underlying things... I guess I'm looking too deep into... Maybe. The, well, the other thing is, right, like, Jinyu says, like, about keeping him free, it's a whole idea of... And Karuko's building a cage. It's a whole idea of, do you let the caged bird free, or do you keep it closed and safe? It's that same argument that you get to see time and time again in other anime. Or got, video games. I got the cage reference to keep him locked up in the cage. Mm-hmm. It's like, do you keep it for yourself, or do you let it free? Do you let it have its own way? Like, I think what Adamisk is meant to embody is kind of like, not just like the idea of like adult and child and stuff, it's to embody like the freedom to flow between the two, almost. Which, when Haruko tries to absorb it, she's single-mindedly working on like her childlike instincts, rather than an adult's, thus... 
she's unable to hold on. And it forces her to split in half and lose him. Again, that's the what I'm taking out of this. I could be completely wrong. And I guess because this comes from Fooly Cooly, which was initially a Gynax series, and Gynax are known for, like, being Gynax and not being directly clear on things, mm -hmm. left open for interpretation, hell, there's a trope called the Gynax ending, where it's so WTF, you're like, what does this mean? Yeah. Mm. So, it's interesting. I don't know. We had the whole idea of Haruko's hair changing from, like, pink to orange, which I think is also part of the split with Jinyu. But then why does Jinyu have, like, silvery hair? Because you're taking the light color out of, like, the orange or red hair that Haruko has. Like, when you pull out the white from, like, a pastel color like pink, you get a more saturated and darker color. Like orange. Like orange or red or whatever it would be. Well, I thank you for being an art major there. I mean, the same thing's true of, like, darker colors if you pull out the black. It becomes lighter. It becomes lighter and you get the more saturated color. Okay. I never really thought of it that way. Yeah, it's very much like the idea of color is in there in that case. Also, here's the other thing that caught me off guard, right? At the end of episode one, Haruko says something along the lines of, like, the real one is appearing. I don't know what she meant by that. Like, was she referring to Hidomi coming out and that the fact that she'd had gotten Ide first and that was wrong? Maybe. This... Or did she get, like, the wrong atomist somehow? I'm I'm thinking it's because she does her mass hypnosis on the class, makes them all celebrate, and Hidomi and Ide are the only two ones that aren't cheering for her. So she's like, aha, I'm after one of those two. Mm, maybe. Actually, speaking of that scene, I really love the fact that, like, the actual things there are just, like, crayon drawings Haruko did. And they're just all imagined, like, the mass hypnosis is making them see, like, amazing shit that's being pictured. I'm just like, what the shit is this? So, is Haruko an alien? I don't fucking know. She sure as hell isn't human. Or at least not wholly human anymore. Like, it, it's hard to... Well, I mentioned this before. She's supposed to be, like, 16 question mark in the original... And then in this, it's just straight 16. But when Jinyu pops up, it's just a question mark. And there's no way Haruko's 16. Because it's been 18 years since the first one. Is that confirmed? That's the that's the space oh. between the two? Because oh, I don't no. know the time. Because that, that's what makes me wonder whether or not Hidomi is now his kid. Or Ide, or Ide is. Because I do not have a time frame whatsoever. I do the best we've got is the reference to, like, Eyebrow Guy's son. Yes. That's the best we've got as far as a time scale, because I do not have one. I could not find anything on the time between the original and the next one. The most I'm assuming is, like, the year it came out is the year the anime takes place in, is my assumption, and that's, like, what, 14 years, I think? 18. 12? 12 or 14? 18? Is it 18? I'm pretty sure, yep. Fooly Cooly came out in Japan in 2000. Okay, yeah, so 18 years, right? That would mean that if Naoto was 12, he'd have to have, like, knocked somebody up at 16 and then just been a dad that left for Hidomi or Ide to even be his offspring. So he would have, assuming that's correct, if it is 16 years, or 18 years, he would have had four years to, like, who would have knocked someone up at 16? It's the only thing that could have made it happen. Mm. That uh, Also, here, here's another thing I forgot to mention. Um, we got a tip off from Hidomi's mother that uh, Hidomi's dad apparently went to work at the factory. Now, I'm assuming that's the medical mechanica factory. Yes. So I highly doubt 
Naruto would have gone there. So I don't, I don't know. Could her dad have been a resistance spy and then something happened to him when he started working there? Maybe. Do we, do we ever get to figure out how Hidomi got the headphones? They were a gift from her father. That's all we know. It, it was that confirmed that it was a gift from her father? I think the mothers told Jinu that. Okay. All right. So that's the, uh, hmm. Cause they said, wasn't it, wasn't it said that it was a medical mechanica headset that, yes. was, that it is? Okay. So yeah, if that's the case, that would make sense. Though if he was a resistance fighter, why would he have ever given anything like that to her, to his daughter? Good point, sir. You just sunk my battleship. Like, I don't... Well, in this case, I, I sunk your inner tube. Now you're just going to fall to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> but, like, I, I don't know. Like, the, the thing is, right, it could either be, yes, he, Domi, and Edie are connected, one of the, or one of the two is connected to one of the main characters from the previous series, or this is all a bullshit red herring just to make us think that something more important is there when it's not. Either and that, it does or this, not matter. Either that, or this could be just a name-only sequel. Mm -hmm. With just subtle uh, nods to the first one. It's not subtle when a character comes back up. Conti's back, that is not subtle. And Haruko's back. Yeah, and Har well, Haruko's the character we're kind of following. Uh, like, at this point, as far as, like, a series goes. So what happened to Conti between original and progressive? Well, clearly we know that the Resistance eventually captured him at some point and started using his body parts to further their own technology, right? That much is clear. How he got captured, we don't fucking know. Like, for for all we know, Nauta's dad sent him out to go get, like, a new case of Crystal Pepsi or something, and he just got ambushed and never came back. <laughs> that sounds like Naris's dad. Like, Conti's not exactly the brightest bulb in the shed, let's put it that way, or the sharpest knife in the in the drawer. He's, it would not shock me to just see him get ambushed by something, you know, and be taken. And since he's normal Conti, not... Now to Conti combination. Yeah, he's not possessed Conti. He doesn't have any powers in his normal form. Yeah, he's just kind of, you know, dopey. Is it probably the best way to put it? I think that would be a good place to put it too, because him trying to escape in Progressive Episode 6 was humorous. He becomes a little dog thing. Actually, that's right. He reminds me of that little dog thing at that point, you know, that uh, Mamimi was, like, hauling around in the original at one point that she was feeding in secret. I thought that was a cat. I think it was a dog thing. It, it, it had, like, the giant metal weird head to it. Oh, that. At one point. Yeah. She also did have a real cat. Yeah, she had, like, a little real cat. Na that she named Takoon, which is what she nicknames everything. Yeah, which was what? Uh, now his actually, brother. No, 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 not that. It was, um, I wanted to say the cat reminded me of something, and I think it was from, like, fuck, Kiki's Delivery Service, that cat. Oh, okay. That's what it reminded me of, the way that one looked. I haven't seen that movie in ages. Maybe I should watch it again. More the shot, it's always a good movie. But yeah, um, she had like the robot dog that she found at one point and was feeding in secret until it got stupidly large. And that's the thing that like, I think ate Conti that when he was possessed and then shoved itself into the hand, like at the climax, uh, at the end of the, uh, sixth episode of the original series. But yeah, like it was, it was one of those, that's what he reminded me of. He looked like the start of that dog again. And then out of nowhere, he just suddenly has his body back. For some reason, somehow. Like, I don't know how he got his body back, like, at the end, when they're, like, getting out of, like, I assume the inside of Medical Mechanica. Maybe? What else do we have here? Like, both Jinyu and Haruko have, like, power similar to Adamisk at this point. 
Jin Yu's is blue, whereas Haruko's is red. Uh, I'm curious if there's a meant to be like a a represent or like a reasoning behind Jin Yu's being blue versus Haruko's red. Could be the whole red only blue only trope. It could also be like color theory too, because colors have symbolism. Mm-hmm. Like I know there's, I, I know that Masako X has gone into like a whole color theory for Super Saiyan colors, and their hair. I think I may have seen that. Um, so it could be something having to do with that. Uh. Yeah, that's just referring to, like, Haruko's hair being orange again. Oh, that's right. That's something I wanted to mention. So, when Haruko does reabsorb um, Jinyu, right, she doesn't get her green eyes back. Her eyes are still red. They're Jinyu's eyes. Oh. She has her original look. She has her pink hair and everything, but she keeps Jinyu's red eyes. Which I found to be weird. Like, why does she keep those eyes, but not... Like, why doesn't she go back to the original green, rather than red? Maybe there's still part of Jinyu within her? Potentially? I don't know. It's it's a weird one, because of the fact, like... You, you would think, like, at that point, it would have been a full reunification... But, like, with the fact that the red eyes are still there. Also, did, I don't remember, but did, was there any point in the original where her eyes turned red? I'll need to watch it again. I don't think there is. There are points where they're black, and that's usually just for, like, the style change. Because it's, like, rather than having, like, the full drawing of the eye, it's just kind of like the dot there or whatever. Either because of distance or the style that's being used. But never read that I can recall. And speaking about um characters who aren't human, Aiko. I'm getting to her. Oh, okay. I'm getting to her. Like I'm reading through some of these things, and it's like, nope, I didn't fix that because I've answered that one already. We've already we've already discussed that at this point. Like the one where it's like the old man is he part of the same agency as like eyebrow guy from the first part? Yeah, yeah, he is. They're, they're from the same thing. And I'm oh. guessing, like like I mentioned in the first one, Eye Patch Guy, he was in the first one in some background shot. It would have had to be because I don't see him being a main character anywhere in there that I recall. Um, I think he may have been talking to OG Eyebrow Guy. My my other question was like, what was that? Oh God, what was it called again? The, uh, there, here it is. The immigrant, immigrant control center, right? Is that the name of the, of, of our guys, like, government agency or whatever? What we're currently calling the resistance? Yes. I am not sure. Cause the satellite that the old woman was in was the immigrant control center satellite. But the guy that, like, when they went to, like, the recycling area, um, you know, the old man and uh, Ivor guy's kid, right? When they went there, it seemed like the guy that was being employed didn't know shit. Because he's, like, saying Conti's an old busted TV head or whatever. Oh, and I am looking around, and crazy vulture guy, he is working with Eyepatch. I got that by the end. Also, I think he was a dodo, not a vulture. Okay. Oh, yeah, vultures but, have the more puffy neck fur. Yeah. Even though it's a bird, I'm saying fur. Deal with it. Well, now you're just going to piss off a bunch of evolutionary theorists. Also, bird all with this. I think that's ornithology, if I recall correctly. Eh, it, it, it's just a joke my friend and I used to do in high school. Like, just say a word, add ologist on the end, and it sounds good enough. Eh. Especially when you get to crazy things like tissue ologist. I mean, come on, guy, guys gotta love their tissues, you know? Huh. In more ways than one. 
I mean, I feel like that was implied, but, you know, you just want to hit that nail on the head a little harder. Don't explain um, the joke. I'll do it for you. I mean, that seems to be your plan. <laughs> you see, when a man loves a tissue... Okay, okay. And now the nail is through the board. <laughs> you have taken the nail gun, shot it at the board, it's come out the other side and nailed itself into another wall. Good job. So yeah, Immigrant Control Center. I have no idea if that's the name that they have now or if that's a separate entity that they're just working under. And the only reason we ever get that name is just because of, like, the subtitles coming in and telling us, like, where we are. Like, no character ever states it directly, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, here's, here, let's talk about the thing you forgot about, all right? Okay. Why do we have a complete transition in style on the fifth episode? Like, I believe, if I remember right, that was immediately after Haruko ate Jinyu. I... Do not know. It's been like, um, like, it's completely changed, right? Now, in the dream sequences, we've had slightly different animation each time, even more so in the fifth episode when it's gone from like, you know, just being in like more of a horror kind of thing or a silent movie kind of thing to a straight up, this is a charcoal drawing that's been animated. Like, that's what we're getting in the episode five dream sequence. Whereas previously we had, I guess you could say the first one was horror. I guess in one of them we had the silent movie, like I said, where she couldn't talk and it was just uh, like the text of her thoughts, I think it was. I think. There was the point where she got super happy-go-lucky. I was super excited just to like kill and murder and die and shit. And everything else. And there was a zombie episode, uh, a zombie sequence at one point. Which was really weird. Yeah, but then in 5, it's just a straight up, it's a complete change in the style so that it's like, everything's got this like more penciled look to it. For some reason, I don't remember that. Like, by the end, it, I think it kind of goes back to the way it was, but for the majority of that episode, it's in that different style, and it's weird. And it makes me wonder, is there a reason for that? Or is it just like, it looks cool, let's do it. I don't know. Like, I I can't think of a specific reason. The only thing that would coincide with that is Haruko eating Jin Yu at the end of the last episode. So episode I don't four. know. Yeah, at the end of episode four. So I don't know if that's what triggers this, in which case, Why? Again, it could be symbolic. Yeah, but at the start of the sixth episode, Jinyu is still inside of Haruko. And the art style is normal. That's and the art style is normal. That's they why, haven't split. That's why I said it could be symbolic. Of what, though? That's the question. I don't know. I like it, and I almost wish like that style was the entire style, because it looks so good. But I just, I don't know what it's about. It's hmm. it's so weird. Also, with the whole charcoal drawing that freaking Hidomi gets in her, like, episode five dream sequence, it's such a drastic change from everything else we've had so far. Like, all her other dreams have been slightly different, not crazy different like this is. Like, it's a charcoal drawing animatic rather than an actual, like, animation, because they can't make it move that smoothly. How hard it is digitally, I've never tried to recreate that style digitally, but physical charcoal drawings are very hard to get just right. Hmm. Especially if you start going for, like, realism. Oh, man. So, we do get... Uh, I do have a couple more questions here. Um, Not very many, but I got some. For instance, like, how does Hidomi know about Adamisk? Because he's never shown up, as far as we're aware, before she mentions this episode 5. That's going back to the fact that you were saying Hidomi might be Naruto's daughter. 
again, it could be, but given the time scale, it doesn't make a lot of sense unless, again, now to knock somebody up at age 16. And her mother does look kind of youthful. Yeah, her mother looks younger than her. Really? I thought so. Like, maybe that's also because of, like, size difference, because Hidomi's taller than her. But she looks younger than Hidomi to me. I was guessing early 30s. I don't even think that. I would say late 20s. Maybe. But, like, if, again, he would have had to knock her up at 16 in order to make this happen if the timing is like we think. Plus, then he would have had to go to, a fa to the factory and then just disappeared in the factory, which maybe makes some sense with how we see him in the ending, because he's just like, what? What is he sitting on, an asteroid, or is that like a bunch of like metal pieces? I'm not sure. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can find the image. I found one. Um, it's got him in like a junkyard with his uh, with his base, staring up at the falling stars. But there was a point where we saw somebody strumming on a guitar at one point, like with their head down, just bent over it, going. I thought that was him as well. And if that was in the same spot just before he stands up and looks at this stuff. Yeah, this this would have been at a different time. Yeah, he's there. There's a thing going across. He's still in the town at that point because the uh, unless he's in another one that has the factory there. But there's the iron in the background. Let's see here. And Malimi, we don't. All we get with her is just her motorbike and like the top half of a uh, what is that thing? A uh, like a wire pole. I forget a telephone pole. But. For now, to, it seems like he's still where he's at. And this is whenever, you know, uh, Haruko gets a hold of Adamus, which who the fuck even knows exactly when the timing for that could be. Like, now to look slightly older here, but it's hard to tell because he's far away. You know, the shot's pulled back and he's facing away from us. So as for, like, when this exactly happened, happens as far as the timeline goes, it's hard to say. Like, if I had to guess, I'd say he's probably like Ide's age at this point. So like 14, maybe 15? Maybe? Okay. Yeah, I can't tell. It's too far away and he's facing away from us, so it's, it's almost too hard to know for certain. Oh, come on, man. He can't be... Hidomi's father, because that would mess up my shipping of Naoto and Inamori. I mean, it also sh you know, screws up any shipping of him with Mamimi as well. Ninamori would be better. <laughs> well, see, now you're, sh now you're just being, you know, a little dick about shipping now. But yeah, like, I don't know how Hidomi knows about it. She shouldn't know about Adamisk. There's nothing to ever hint that she would ever know about Adamisk. But does it ever mention how long her father's been gone for? I assume a while with the way that she's just become, like, dead to the world, essentially. So more than two or three years. I would say that she was probably young when it happened, like, five or six, I want to say. Because if she was older... Now, uh, actually, some I would say actually somewhere between six and ten would be my guess. Okay, so Nauta, if if Nauta is her father, would tell her stories about Adamus when she was a young child, and maybe she was like, "Oh, that thing from Dad's stories is actually real." I mean, she doesn't call him Adamus by name, but she says, "You're just interested in that big bird, aren't you?" Like, or, or a line really close to that. Like, she calls it a big bird. So, maybe Kodomi as Naoto's daughter confirmed? I don't think so. Like, 
I still think the possibility is there, but it's just it's it feels too thin. Then again, this is all speculation on my end too. Yeah, I feel like like again, assuming that our timeline is correct and it is eighteen years between the two series, he'd have to have knocked up the mom at sixteen. He would have had to have left her at like twenty twenty one or so. Assuming that would be the case to go to the factory and never come back. And then, you know, you got all this other bullshit that just, it, it feels too tenuous. Like, there's, there's not enough, I don't think, to really confirm that as the case. And I do Plus think... we have the whole, plus we have the whole situation with Ide literally having the exact same hairstyle. And I don't think any of these things will get answered. Probably not. Not unless they just want to, like, wrap up FLCL in a nice, tight little bow with uh, Alternative. No, 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 no. It will probably open another Pandora's box of questions. My other question, then, would be, like, why does Adam, why did Adamus come to Earth? Like, in the first series, he was, from what I understood, trapped there inside the Medical Mechanica factory. And was, like, barely getting out through, like, Nauta and Conti. Why does he come back this time? Is he just drawn there by, like, all the N.O. power, or what? Probably. Or is it, like, Haruko just trying to abuse the N.O. power to, like, draw him in, like, bait? Yes, I think more of that. Maybe he feeds off of N.O. power, and... Then, I don't know. Yeah, see, it's it's hard to understand, because, like, he has a ridiculous amount of NO power to begin with. That's why Medical Mechanica wanted him. Or at least that's what I got out of the first one. And what exactly is NO power? There's a wiki article on it. I forget exactly what it says, but it's some kind of ability that allows, like, for teleportation between... Like, one point and another point. And wherever it's located is, like, between the lobes of the brain. Hence why it comes out of your forehead. Oh. Uh... And can we go back to Aiko and what she might be? Hold on, here. Eno has the power to mentally call other objects and energies through light years of space... It calls upon uh, both sides of the brain's thought processing uh, to open channels through multiple dimensions to simultaneously pull things through. N.O. may be a metaphor for opening the mind, you know, like the third eye and all that stuff. Oh. I'm just reading the article now, too. So my other... <sighs> my bigger question is, like, does everybody have an NO power? Because Marco didn't until he banged heads with Hidomi. Or is it just you have NO to a certain degree? Like, everyone has it just to a certain degree. Maybe? Oh, here we go. The emotional maturity of... This is more speculation, but the emotional maturity of the character may correlate with the NO ability the character has, uh, which would explain why Kamon is useless. Oh, eh, that's eyebrow guy's name. Kamon. Okay. Uh, is useless in the aspect, in this aspect, and why Adamus is an embodiment of maturity, has incredible control over NO. Oh. Oh. Though that doesn't really make sense with the corrupted symbols that Adamus gives out. Yes. Unless the person that he's possessing at the time. No, that still wouldn't make sense, because when he's possessing Jinyu, his face has that symbol on it. Still. And Jinyu seems to be very mature. At least when compared to everyone else. Especially so with Haruko. So I don't know if that's even the case. I don't know. Anyway, you were, you wanted to talk about Aiko. I just found it interesting that she may be a robot Plant? Person? I want to know if she's a person or if she's literally like a bioweapon. 
But at the end, when she was spit out and reborn through the pumpkin, is she human now? If that's the case, I guarantee that's not what Colin's kid wanted. Or at least not something he planned, I should say. Like, the whole idea was for her to trigger everything through, like, the plant, and she has, like, plant powers. To con- Hell, she, she didn't even know she was going to come back alive from that, as far as I can tell. She has plant powers to counteract mochi powers. <laughs> Apparently. Although, why? Here's, here's my other question, right? It seemed like she was able to do that at any point, like, so long as she had the trigger. Which, you know, was the potted plant. Is that why she gave it away in episode three? I think that was part of the reason why she gave it away. She probably didn't know what the trigger itself was to begin with, so that's probably why she was trying to give away everything in the house. To try to get rid of whatever the trigger might be. Oh. I mean, that's why she handed away, like, the lion or whatever it was statue to the kid, too. Like, the other kid. Oh, yeah. My assumption is that she didn't. She knew that the trigger was in the house, but she didn't know what it was. She knew it was disguised, but not what it was disguised as. So she's trying to like get rid of that stuff, so that way she can't be used. It is interesting though, because it said like the, it said the potted plant reacted with an O powers, right? Yes. So is did it? So here's my question then. If it was getting a reaction while, like, Hidomi's head was sucking everything in, like Har- like Haruko and the others in, why did that trigger on um, Aiko? Unless they need to be within a certain range, maybe, of it? Oh, and just bouncing back to what we were talking about earlier, I just looked and... I think we may have argued a bit about this in the original episode, but the forehead characters on Conti are strictly adult. Adult is two characters in Japanese, and the second one is flipped upside down with a circle drawn in the middle of them. Okay. So I believe when Nauta in the beginning, powers up, it becomes child, then it flips to the corrupted adult character. Okay, alright. And it looks like it's the same character in this one, like the corrupted adults, uh, kanji, or whatever it is. I don't know what child is read as, because I'm just looking at the picture now. But, mm. and because Adamus is, like, the pinnacle of maturity, he has the symbol for adult on his head. Granted, it's corrupted. Yeah. Which means something. Yeah. I like the idea that it's not... You know, it's not that he's the embodiment of being an adult. It's that he has the balance between the two. But, yeah. Uh, what else was I going to say here? Yeah, so, Aiko, let's, go, let's get back to her then. Okay. Like, we don't know what the fuck she is. Like, we don't know she's human. We don't know she's not a bioweapon. She has, like, she sprouts vines and plants at she- random. She can also connect with Conti and speak through Conti. So, is she part robot too? That's another question. Actually, we should ask about Hidomi. Is she a robot or is she human? Because she does have the mechanical arm. She has the mechanical, she has the whole mechanical body. Hell, Haruko even tells her, like, she, well, they're in the satellite thing, you may not be human. You may not be able to go back to being human or something like that. So my thought was like, wait, 
has she been like hiding as a robot the whole time? In which case, what does that say about her mother? Hmm. And in episode one, when she was shown in robot, like uh, in her robotic form, when Thank You My Twilight was playing, I was mm-hmm. thinking, oh, this is going to be her Conti merged form. <sighs> I, that's, I, I was wondering about that, but I wasn't sure. Because I was expecting it to be a little bit more like the original than it turned out to be. Yeah. Alright, I have I have one last thing I want to ask then. Right? And that's... What happened to Jinyo at the end of, se- uh, of this season? Right? Because the last we see of her, she's driving out of the town telepathic car. Yeah, and we don't know where she's going. However, when we get that final cut into, like, some of the uh, alternative kids that are there, right, we get a shot of, like, I'm assuming it's the main girl looking off in the distance toward, like, the current, like, the main town. And we see, like, a red light and a blue light following the red light from the distance. So is that red light, red light supposed to be Haruko with Jinyu following? Or is the blue light meant to be Haruko following after the red light Atomisk? Small spoiler, from what I understand, Jinyu does not appear at all in alternative. See, now that makes it even more confusing. Because what happens to her? She could show up at one point, but from what I understand, she is not in at all. My only other thought process in that event, in that situation then, is that alternative is literally what could have happened instead. Because the fact that Jinyu's not there makes it very strange. Considering her whole set mission is to stop Haruko from basically, you know, basically stop Haruko from harassing Adamisk and let Adamisk be on his way. So short of them refusing together, which actually now that I'm looking at, like, some of the art from uh, Alternative, it seems like Haruko's... You know what? What? Hmm... What if Alternative is actually, and we're getting the speculation, obviously, what if Alternative is actually Part two. what would have happened, no, 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 what would have happened if Haruko hadn't split? Oh. If she had been able to hold on to that power. Oh. So we're literally saying Alternative. That's what I'm wondering if that's the case. So then and, what would And you... if, if, if progressive is meant to be taken literally, it would be probably Haruko coming to terms with who she is. Oh. You know, kind of, kind of in the way that she does with, um, like, when Hidomi says it to her, right? Like, do you not understand why you're still going after him? It's because you can't reach him and you're like going to keep doing it again and again because you love it, that chase. The progressive, I think, in this case, would literally be Haruko coming to terms with who she is and what she is. Hmm. But then, at any point, does Jinyu have feelings for Animus because... She was once part of Haruko. I mean, she kind of goes into it in the whole idea of, like, she accepts that she cannot be with him in the way that, like, Haruko imagines it. Okay. But she's fine with just being his, like, protector, his defender, I guess. Okay. Like, it almost seems like she's kind of already come to terms with that. Yeah, because I'm looking at these again, and Haruko is her normal self here with, like, her green-yellowish eyes and her pink hair. Hmm. For, uh, for, uh, not progressive, alternative. 
Like she's got that look to her again. Jinya herself being, ha- having accepted already where she's at. Whereas Haruko, it literally took all the way through progressive for her to do that. Right? Right. Uh, and then like, like I don't, I don't think it was just it was just taking progressive like literally and that was my thought process like we're taking progressive literally it's haruko accepting who she is and what she is and if we take alternative seriously or literally it's basically what happens if she hadn't split if jinko or Jun, uh, if jinyu and haruko had not split from each other so this is a branching path from the original that's my current theory just from what I've seen. Because if Jinyu doesn't show up and Haruko looks exactly the way she did in the original, you know, barring clothing changes, obviously, then that's not that that's the only way I can see it possibly being the case. Or we get some kind of, you know, cut scene, or not cut scene, but like flashback of the two of them reaccepting each other and becoming one person again. Like, fully, this time. But then why might the fact be that Alternative is released in Japan first, and well, then Progressive? If it's being literal with this, then they could show it in either order and it wouldn't matter. Because okay. literally they are going to be mirrors of two different paths that could be taken. Well, we'll that, just have to wait until September to find out. If that's not... Well, that's the thing, too. If that's not the case, right, we only know that, aside from, like, dialogue, we only know that Jin Yu and Haruko split because of the ending scenes that we saw in the credits. But we also get shots from the kids from Alternative in the credits, too. Hmm. Like, I was wondering the whole time... Who are these kids that are here? Like, are these characters we're going to meet before the end of, like, Progressive here? Or all these, like, from Alternative? Because th- we even get the kids, we even get, like, Mamimi, uh, Nino Mori, and uh, Naota in that, like, end piece as Haruko is, like, riding in silhouette on the Vespa. Like, we get them in the background as well from the first one. So, yeah, it's a toss-up. I don't know. Like, I'm leaning toward them being taken literally as titles, but maybe not. Again, it's it's up in the air enough. But at this point, I'm leaning toward that being the case until something shows me different. And I'm pretty sure this was designed as one project, not to... Separate projects. Actually, that that would be interesting too, right? Because I know that Danganronpa three is set up in a similar way, right? Like is where they that have the with the black and white bear. Yes. Okay. Like where you have like you follow the good path and then you follow the bad path, right? And it's like two anime airing simultaneously, but you won't. Watch one from the good series, and then you flip over to the bad series and watch the first episode of that. Because they complement each other, and interactions that happen on either side influence the opposite side. So, maybe parts of Alternative will flow into parts of Progressive, but we'll only notice that when both parts come together? Maybe, but Progressive seemed pretty concrete in what it was. Like, there isn't enough there as far as what the fuck is going on that I feel there would be an outside force, you know, in this case, alternative, influencing it in some way. I don't see... Like, I don't see any missing parts that could show me, like, that could be opened up and show me what's happening on the other side. Hmm. I still think it's a split path idea. Like, even if it is a single project, 
that could have been because the creator came down with two different ideas of where to go with things. So it's just like, well, let's make both. Maybe? Because after all, this was started as a passion project more than anything else. Yes, yes. And from what I understand, at first, the pillows were like, oh, fully coolly, what is this? We want nothing to do with this since we're trying to be a mainstream Japanese rock band, and I think they got talked into doing it by somebody, and they and they were saying, thank God we did do that. Yeah. And then, I think like, it was 2005, 2006, there were rumors about a potential sequel for Fooly Cooly, and they're like, Oh God, please, please let us be a part of this. And then everything fell apart until recently when it got brought back up and completely produced. So the pillows are now mm -hmm. completely on board for anything fully cruelly related. Wait, hold on. 19, Oh, oh, interesting. What? Huh. All right, so I was looking for a little bit at the Google image searches I was doing for reference images, right? And okay. I found one from Progress, uh, from Alternative, and it's just a picture of Harco holding, like, a guitar and the subtitle of a 1967 model Mustang. And I didn't even realize that's an actual guitar model. Like, I thought she was referencing a car, and I'm like, wait, is she referencing... Gen uh, Genius car? No. No, it's the guitar she's holding. Hmm. Which, again, I don't know guitars that well. I didn't know that this was actually a name, like a brand, uh, a model name for a guitar. So is there symbolism there? I, maybe? I don't, I don't friggin' know. <laughs> You're asking me questions I don't have answers to, alright? I haven't watched the series, I don't friggin' know. Oh, man. And I predict for the next Deep End, which will be in the, within the next month, I'm guessing, I'm guessing you will have so many questions when we cover this anime. I'm gonna have so much coming back, that's a guarantee at that point. And I may not be able to answer them all myself. None of us. I don't think any of us will be able to. This is, this is freaking Gynax and Fooly Cooly. Yes, yes. We'll never have answers. We'll never have the answers we seek. It's all speculation. It, it's some, like, it's some creator's fever dream is what it actually is. Hmm. Like, literally, they, they could be like fucking, um, Yoko Taro, the guy that created Nier Automata, when he's asked, like, why do you create, like, female character, like, good-looking female characters? Well, I like pretty girls. It, it's literally the only answer! Like, why, why did you choose a female pro- I like pretty girls, that's why. I should show you, like, an interview of Yoko Taro at some point, because he's, like, fucking insane half the time. So, what does this gear symbolize? It symbolizes a machine. Exactly. It could be that stupid. Like, clearly it's not, but that would be his answer. He'd, he'd be that, like, blank-faced about it. <laughs> Either that, or he'd just go, he'd go crazy, because he, whenever he goes out, like, to be interviewed or something, he puts on a mask of a character from, like, the first mirror, and at certain points he's just, like, rolling on the ground with the mask on. <laughs> and I'm like, what the shit? <laughs> I'm just like, okay, all right, I like this man. He's straight up about things, and he's insane. That just reminds me of, well, not the whole insanity thing, but she's not seen without this, but there is a running joke within the Toho community that his creator, Zun, is an alcoholic because he is never seen without an alcoholic beverage somewhere in the vicinity of his picture. Mm -hmm. And I believe there was one time 
he was seen with, like, a bottle of soda, and everybody's like, this is an imposter! Oh, God. Oh, yeah, there was that Toho anime that we might... I don't know. I think, I think that's it. I think it's time to get out. We're getting wrinkles on our fingers. Yes. We need Metal Mechanica to iron out the creases of the world. And our skin. Yes. And maybe then... I don't want wrinkles! Maybe then the thoughts will travel faster across our brains? <laughs> if you're lucky. Maybe. So... Yes. Come back in a few weeks for a lot of questions, a lot of deeper discussion. Um... It, I got a seven. I still don't understand what's going on. Check out our gaming pod... We're not gaming podcast, but Fever Gaming every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Please do. It's quite fun. You'll enjoy it. Yes. Our um, voices are there. A potential mo movie podcast is coming in about a month, maybe? Alright, I think, I think it's time to go. Bye-bye. Yep. See ya.